Hello, Jack Armstrong, TSN Toronto Raptors analyst with us today. Jack, I guess the best place to always start when it comes to you is your catchphrase. Hello. How you doing, Bobby? I'm doing great. You know, I wanted to touch base with you and see if you were ready to get back to work with the NBA season. No, I am. I'm excited about it. And uh, I think, I think you know, the NBA, to their credit, is very detail-oriented. And uh, I feel confident that, uh, you know, they have as good a plan as you can put together. I mean, nothing's perfect. Uh, and, and I'm sure there'll be challenges and, and things that they have to work through. Uh, but I feel confident in the leadership of Adam Silver that uh, he's thought through all these things things and uh uh they have you know a plan in place and protocols in place uh to try to ensure that everyone there in orlando is safe now jack what a difference a year makes for you and the toronto raptors i gotta tell you i mean uh your thoughts on the nba bubble in orlando and just the excitement to get back to work and do some games while also trying to navigate around this global pandemic well, Bobby, first of all, the Raptors are still defending champs, so that's good. So I could I, I can uh, enjoy wearing my ring, uh, and, and hopefully maybe another time. We'll see how it goes. But, uh, you know, to me, I, I, I think that from our perspective, from a broadcast, uh, all 22 teams that are in the bubble, uh, none of the local broadcasters will be doing the games from there. We'll all be doing them remotely. Uh, I've done a number of games in my career remotely before, so I'm comfortable with that. I've never done games where you're doing it remotely and there's no fans in the stands. That'll be different. So, you know, you really got to bring your mojo and enthusiasm to each game. And I'm excited about that on both a television perspective and a radio perspective. And it should be fun. Uh, you know, and, and, you know, during this pandemic, you know, you look at the, uh, you know, Major League Baseball and, and the NBA and, and the NHL. Uh, PGA golf, a little bit of tennis, uh, MLS soccer. Um, I think people do need a diversion. And as long as it's uh, done safely and with the best interests of uh, the players and the staffs that are involved there, uh, then, then I'm totally fine with it. And uh, because we need people to have some degree of an outlet uh, to, to take their minds off of things. And I also think it's a wonderful platform with this time of social unrest uh, for our players and our league uh, to really get the message out there that it's time for an even greater emphasis and change in terms of the challenges that face our society today. And I feel confident in the NBA, and I'm proud to be part of the NBA because I think our league is probably the most progressive of all the major leagues. So what's it like in the NBA bubble? I mean, obviously a new normal now because you've got uh, so many changes with protocols and do you really think it's going to be able to work? Well, I'm confident, you know, and I, I think, Bob, I think the thing that really jumps out at me is it's going to come down to professionalism and buy-in. You know, that each one of those players uh, has to be professional and, and completely buy into it. The challenge I see is when you have these eight regular season games and now suddenly you're one of those six teams or four teams right off the bat and another two that eventually are going to go home. Uh, as you see the reality playing out, uh, do you stay committed? Do you stay bought into what they're doing there? Uh, and at the same time, when you get into the playoffs and you have a series that maybe goes a three Oh or three one um, and the same thing is, is someone going to pull the shoot and do something silly. Um, you know, as long, I think the teams that have a chance to really win, uh, the players, the coaches, the staffs, everyone involved, I feel very confident they understand the magnitude of this. Uh, I just worry about uh, occasionally it may be a player or two that is on a team that isn't going far or is going to get eliminated uh, of doing something silly. Uh, are we going to get through this uh, 100%? Probably not. Will there be some tests that test positive? Yeah, uh, I, I just want to make sure that people don't overreact because you have a lot of talking heads out there that immediately when something like that happens uh, are going to start screaming and yelling. And in my opinion, uh, let's be confident in the protocol that's in place and allow them to do their job.
Jack, who presents the biggest challenge to the Raptors in the East? I'm assuming since you're a Brooklyn, New York guy, you might say the Nets. Not <laughs> enough. Maybe. Well, you know what? They called me about a 10-day contract. They're so banged up right now. So, uh, uh, no, just kidding. Uh, I would say, uh, obviously, the Milwaukee Bucks. Uh, they steamrolled last year through the regular season. They steamrolled again this year through the regular season. They're a magnificent team. The Raptors did a wonderful job coming de- coming back from 0-2 to win uh, against the Bucks the last time around. So that that I think is the biggest challenge is dealing with them. They're terrific. You know the Raptors, the Lakers, and the Bucks are the top three teams in the NBA record wise, and the Raptors are the second seed in the East right now. I think in the East as well you have the Celtics. They have tremendous scoring. A great coach in Brad Stevens. I think Miami, don't sleep on them because they defend. They got a great coach, and uh, they got a ton of perimeter shooting, and Jimmy Butler is a magnificent player. Uh, and then don't and, – and Philadelphia, they have two Hall of Fame talents in Embiid and Simmons. Now, some of their chemistry is an issue, but they're a nightmare matchup for anybody. Uh, but, you know, I, I think the East will be tremendous, uh, and I think out West by far the two L.A. teams are, are the teams to beat. I was just going to ask you, actually, if you thought Toronto had a shot at maybe seeing Kawhi Leonard in the finals. I do. I, you know, I, I think the Raptors, when you look at them, it is something interesting, Bobby. You look at Philadelphia. They have a great home record and a terrible road record. So what's it going to look like on a neutral court? Are they better there? Are they worse there? I have no idea. Uh, but I look at the Raptors. They have the ex- identical record on the road as they do at home. You know, I don't know who said it was Socrates or Plato. Some real smart guy said excellence is a habit, not an act. I don't think the Raptors are actors. They got habits. So in a neutral court environment or if you put them up on Mars, I I think I feel pretty confident that their game travels. They defend. uh, They got tremendous chemistry. They uh, they got outstanding coaching. uh, They have tons of, of championship experience and playoff experience. This is the seventh year in a row they'll be in the playoffs. So in, a, in an environment like this, that's unusual for everybody, I like habits. I like consistency. I like maturity. I like chemistry. I like experience. I think those things will matter because there's a lot of curveballs coming at you every which way. And I think it's important to have people that are stable and level and consistent. I think those things play out. And a lot of times, as you know, Bobby, in playoff games, it could come down to one play or two plays. And I want guys that really understand the magnitude of the moment. That would also be some final storyline if you see Kawhi, of course, win the finals MVP for the Raptors and then the next year be back in the finals with the Clippers and facing his old team. I mean, the NBA would probably be pretty happy with that that finish. I, I think they'd be thrilled with it. And I'd be more than happy right now to give Kawhi the MVP uh, in the in the NBA Finals on the losing team. I mean, the Raptors can beat them in seven. Feel free to give him uh, the MVP of the series. Uh, I'm okay with the Raptors winning in seven and Kawhi getting the MVP on the losing team. But I have a ton of respect for Kawhi. He's a great competitor. And it's interesting. You know, you look at a guy like Kawhi Leonard. The thing I love about him is, is that you look at an environment like Orlando, it's all basketball. And that's what he's about. He's no frills. You know, it's not it's not the style and the sizzle. It's all about the substance. It's all about his actions. And to me, that's why a guy like that and that's why a team like the Raptors. And there's a lot of really good teams as well, along with that. And I don't discount anybody. But I think the teams that are all business, that are mature, that are there on a mission, I think they're the teams that will continue to advance, and obviously as long as you stay healthy. Well, my friend, it's definitely a matter of navigating the new normal. I wish you the best of luck with the restart of the NBA, and I hope to see you in the finals again on television. Bobby, that would be great, and I look forward to seeing you soon on the Rose Hill campus, and, uh, and I look forward to coming back and speaking to your students. Uh, I had a great time. It was an honor and privilege uh, to be there, and I look forward to doing that for you again. Always great chatting with you. Best of luck. And again, same likewise. Hope to see you soon, Jack. Thanks, Bobby. Go Rams. Take care.